Hello everyone. Hopefully you can all see and hear me okay. Uh, my name is Carrie. I am City Market's Assistant Outreach and Education Manager. I'm the one who's been sending you all of the emails, so now you can finally put a little bit of a face to a name. Um, super excited to have you here tonight for our Filipino Feast live stream. We're making a new recipe. It's new to me, so I'm super excited to be able to try it and see how it's made. Um, this is the only time that you'll see me on screen most likely. After this, I will be behind the scenes. I will put a, uh, an announcement into the question and answer box. That is where anytime during tonight's class, if you have a question, a comment, something you'd like clarification on, you can type it into that box. I will see it. And if I can answer it, I will answer it and text back to you. Um, or I can ask it out loud to our instructor if it's a question or comment for our instructor as well. Um, like I said, when I go behind the screen, I will put an announcement into that so you can see where it is and how to access it. If you already know where that is and how to access it, go ahead and put where you're watching from. It's always fun to see um, the reach of these classes and how far they're reaching outside of little old Burlington, Vermont. Uh, if you're joining us a little bit late, you can hit live. It's down at the bottom near the play pause button and that catches you up to where we are rather than making you start watching from the very beginning. So that'll catch you up. Um, and if you are joining us a little bit late, no worries, this class is being recorded. It will go up on our website at a later date. We're a little bit behind on uploading those classes, but eventually you'll be able to watch this class back on your own schedule. Um, I think that's it. Oh, we are watching, you are watching on about a 20 second delay from what we are streaming out to when you hear it. So if you're like, I typed in my question, why haven't they gotten to it yet? Maybe we have, and you're just catching up to where we are, where we've asked it. So keep in mind that you're on about a 20 to 30 second delay. Um, I think without further ado, that's all for me. I will turn things over to our lovely instructor for the evening, Maria. Maria, take it away. Hi, and thank you for joining us tonight. My name is Maria Garrido. Um, I teach uh, cooking classes here in the Burlington area. I went to NECI um, and uh, I worked for the Burlington School District for about eight years. Um, and now I teach, mostly teach cooking classes. Um, we've been doing this Filipino feast series for a couple years now, and we have a nice collection of recipes on the website. Um, but this is going to be a new, um, a new recipe that we haven't done yet. So um, again, if you have any questions at any point when we're going through this, um, please feel free to type it into the question and answer box and um, Carrie will let me know what they are and we can get to your questions. Um, okay, without further ado, <clears throat> we're going to be doing a dish tonight called Panakbet Tagalog. Um, Panakbet in, in the Tagalog language means shriveled. And so what we're going to do is it's a pork um, and vegetable dish and we cook the dish, we cook the vegetables until they're a little shriveled up. Um, and um, we have a special ingredient called um, bagung alamang. Um, it's also, in this case, called shrimp fry, um, it, the brand that I got here. Um, bagung alamang is a fermented shrimp paste. Um, sometimes in other regions of the Philippines, in different regions of the Philippines, it might be a sh fermented fish paste, um, but for the um, for the recipe we're doing tonight, we're going to use the bagung alamang, which is the fermented shrimp paste. Um, shrimp or, or krill are packed with salt, and they're allowed to ferment in um, big vessels. And then the paste is scraped out after a period of time. The paste is scraped out of the bottom of the vessel, um, and that's what this is. It's a very concentrated. Mm -hmm. Um, flavor, um, but it's, and um, the liquid that pulls on the top of the vessels is drained off to become fish sauce. Um, so if you're familiar with fish sauce, um, there is also a, ver a variant of fish sauce that's made from shrimp or krill. Um, so that's what, that's what we're getting here. We're getting the, the paste from the bottom of the barrel, and then if you use fish sauce, you're getting the liquid that comes off the top. Both of them are very salty, very salty, which is why this recipe doesn't include any salt. Um, <laughs> uh, but there's variance in flavor depending on the fish or the shrimp that they use. Um, yes, and we shop for this class if you're in the area. Um, most of the ingredients were found at Thai Fat on North 
Ave North or Street. Street, North yeah. Street. Um, there's also the always full Asian market, but Maria has said that she wasn't as successful yeah. as finding Just, this ingredients um, there. I was able to find this shrimp paste at the always full market over on Williston Road. Um, they do have it at Thai Fat as well. They have a different brand, but it's still fermented shrimp paste. Um, and there's usually a couple different bands, but you want to get the, the shrimp paste, not the fish paste. Mm -hmm. um, and normally you can get the vegetables that we used um, at Always Full or even the Essex um, Everest Market. But just this past week, I had better luck getting them at Thai Fat. So if you're um, in the Burlington area, the Thai Fat uh, market on North Street was a good look, a source for these vegetables. Um, okay, so what we're going to, I'm going to make one change to the printed recipe that you may have gotten in email. Um, and that is I'm going to cook the pork first. I'm going to put the pork in the pot first um, because we're using pork belly. And pork belly can cook for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, same with pork shoulder or pork butt. It can cook for a long time, and the longer it cooks, um, the better it is. Um, the sh if it cooks for a short period of time, it tends to be tough. So I'm gonna cook the, I'm gonna cut and cook the pork belly first, um, while uh, and then while that's cooking, I'll cut the rest of the vegetables. So we have a really nice piece of pork belly here, beautiful but I'm only going to use half of it. Yet. <laughs> I was going to ask, is the recipe quantities that you sent out, is that for four servings, six it's servings? It's about four servings, okay. yeah. So you could easily double this. Yeah, you could easily double this. Great. Um, it's a very adaptable recipe. Mm -hmm. um, it's basically a braise of um, vegetables and pork. So um, it's easy to increase it or adapt it. As we go through the ingredients, I'll mention um, substitutions if you're interested in those. Um, the only thing is this can't be made, technically this can't be made as a vegan recipe because the shrimp paste is the key ingredient. Um, you could try it if you know of any um, vegan substitutes for shrimp paste or fish sauce, but the texture is going to be um, significantly different because mm -hmm. you're not going to have the ground shrimp um, in the dish. Um, and sometimes this dish is done without pork. It's still done with the shrimp paste, but it's just done as a side vegetable dish. So you can omit the pork um, if you want to do that. Is there a similar dish in Filipino cooking without the shrimp paste? Like if you left out the shrimp paste, would you be making something else or it's just wrong? It's just no, not it's this. Just, it's just <laughs> okay. not this. Um, yeah, so the shrimp paste is is the key ingredient. Now the shrimp paste being, um, being a fermented fish product, in throughout history, there have been a number of fermented fish sauces. Um, in ancient Greece, there was one called garum, I believe. Mm -hmm. I think it was ancient Greece, which is again fermented fish because in the days before refrigeration, um, one of the ways to preserve meat was to ferment it with salt. Um, and so that became the first condiments. Um, so just like we have fish sauce and, and bagung and the early versions of ketchup. Um, you also have Worcestershire sauce, which starts out as fish. Um, so it's a very um, traditional ingredient to add flavor to dishes. If you're watching your salt intake, could you do this recipe with less of the shrimp paste and just still have a little bit of that flavor? Or do you really need that full quarter cup? Um, you could try it with less. You would have, you would have a little bit less of the flavor, mm -hmm. but um, it would, it would still have some of the flavor. You know, they make like low sodium soy sauce. I doubt they probably make low sodium shrimp. I don't think they make low sodium fish sauce. Um, by definition, yeah, it's just salt. <laughs> it's just salt. 
Um, we have Alice asking a question on some vegetable substitutes. I know you said you're going to talk about yeah. them later. Do you want to wait until you're doing the veggies to talk about um, them? I can answer a question okay. about that. Alice just wants to know what can be substituted for the bitter melon and for the okra? For the bitter melon, you can substitute. Um, zucchini, mm -hmm. but it won't taste the same because bitter melon is actually bitter. Yeah. Um, and for the okra, the okra adds a, a, a unique texture to the dish um, because of the thickening. Um, because of the thickening fa factors in okra. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a little harder to, um, it's harder to substitute. But you could, um, I'm trying to think, let me think on that for a minute because I, I think you can, you can substitute you want to substitute something that's about the same texture. Yeah. But okra again has a specific um, function in the dish, so like it's harder to substitute. Cornstarch slurry almost like. You could try a cornstarch slurry to thicken the dish um, and just add more um, squash. Um, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure how that would work out. I'm going to change the. I just cut pork on this, so I'm yep. just going to change the. Yep, and quick hand wash. And a quick hand wash. Ah, we have somebody here asking, can I use balachan or balachan, which I learned when I lived in Singapore. It's a shrimp paste. Sounds like maybe it's just the Singaporean version of the Filipino shrimp paste. Yes. Um, there are different, just like with fish sauce, there's different shrimp pastes used in different countries. Um, the variation might be the percentage of salt to shrimp that's used to ferment it, but most of them are very similar because they're just concentrated yeah. shrimp and salty salt. shrimp. <laughs> um, so yes, if you're familiar with a shrimp paste from another country, um, then you can try that as well. Um, just like with fish sauce, um, there's patis, P-A-T-I-S, Patis is in Filipino cuisine and Nokchan is in, um, I think, Vietnamese. Vietnamese. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the same. It's the same thing. So I'm going to start this. Uh, Did you add any oil or is it? I didn't add an oil okay. because there's a lot of fat in pork belly. Great. You can see in our camera view, the bitter melon is that green sort of wrinkled looking melon sitting there in the bowl. So it does look a bit like the zucchini, just wrinkly, but it's got a very bitter, sharp flavor. Whereas zucchini, you know, I'm going to add just like a little nothing. bit of oil. Is it sticking? Yeah. yeah. That hot plate gets very hot. <laughs> the hot plate gets very hot, but it takes a while for it to warm up. OK, so as far as vegetables are concerned, we have a kom kabocha squash. Um, we're only going to use about half of one tonight. Um, and we have bitter melon. This is what the bitter melon looks like. We have long beans. And you can see why they're called long beans. <laughs> yeah. They look very much like green beans, but they're very long. Um, we have a couple of tomatoes, some okra, and the recipe calls for Asian eggplant, but we have a regular eggplant because we couldn't get the Asian ones. Asian eggplants are thinner and longer, mm -hmm. um, and they have smaller seeds, but you can substitute a regular eggplant too, that's fine. And we have garlic, ginger, and onions. So I'm going to start with the onions. 
is that kind of the holy trinity of of Filipino cooking? You know, the way carrot, onion, and celery is. Is it the garlic, garlic, ginger, and yeah. onions? Yeah. Great. Just it's been in all the recipes we've done together. <laughs> Garlic, ginger, and onions are the holy trinity of Asian cooking. Oh, Alice is asking, can I use frozen okra or does it have to be fresh? You can use frozen okra. Great. Even if it's um, the frozen okra that's sliced mm -hmm. already, yeah. Would you thaw it or would you just toss it in frozen? I would just it? toss it in frozen. Okay. And the recipe calls for four cloves of garlic. Um, if you really like garlic, I won't tell anybody if you add more. <laughs> um, same with the ginger. It calls for two tablespoons of ginger. If you really like ginger, I won't tell anybody. <laughs> Are you aiming to have the shrimp paste be a main flavor of this, or is it sort of a background note and it doesn't matter if you put it's, way more it's garlic? It's the main flavor. Okay. Yeah. It just is complemented by the, the ginger and the garlic, so you can add more. It smells good in here already, and all we're doing is cooking pork. All we're, cooking, all we're doing is cooking pork belly. And notice I'm not putting any seasoning on it. I'm not putting any salt. Yeah. Because really again, we're going to have enough salt in this dish. Maria is also happy to answer other questions, not necessarily about this recipe, especially if you've watched any of her other videos with us. She does a lot of really great Filipino recipes. So if you have other questions. Yes, if you're interested in other Filipino uh, dishes on the website, we have um, a couple more. Uh -huh. um, we have one for lumpia, which are Filipino egg rolls, fried egg rolls. Um, we have one for chicken adobo, mm -hmm. um, which is uh, a braised chicken with soy sauce and vinegar. That's kind of the national dish. Right? Yeah, that's say. that's that's the national dish of the Philippines. Um, and that video also includes puto, which are steamed rice muffins. I can put the link to where those videos live in the chat if people haven't seen that before. And like I mentioned at the beginning, we are a little bit behind on uploading them. Um, you know, staffing issues just like the rest of the world. So some of the ones from more recently have not been published yet, but they will be. We'll get there. And there is the link in the chat for people. The puto and adobo one is up. Yep. Um, Lumpia one is up. I think your pancit one is not up. I think that's the one that we're is still in uh, limbo. So the garlic just needs to be roughly chopped. It doesn't need to be finely minced. I prefer it to be chopped rather than pressed. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like it, it just has a better texture in the dish. Do you ever use the like pre-jarred garlic paste in your cooking at all? Um, I haven't used it in a while. Okay. Again, with pre the pre-jarred um, garlic paste tends to be um, tends to be a different texture mm -hmm. than. Um, than the chopped garlic. Yeah. We have someone here saying, I tried Maria's chicken adobo and it was by far one of the best versions I've made. The seasonings were just right. Thank you. <laughs> so there you go. Thank you. We're trying new recipes. 
that's the other thing too. If you do um, make this recipe at a later date, whether that's you know with the recipe later tonight or whatever, we'd love to see photos. We always enjoy seeing photos when people make this in their home kitchen since we can't all be you know together in the kitchen cooking. It's it's a good way to share what you've made and we'd love to see it. Yeah, I miss the days when we had the in class in the in person classes. Mm -hmm. It was Thanks. really nice to have a group of people cooking together and then eating together afterwards. Yeah. So hopefully one of these days we'll get back to those. Fingers crossed. Yeah, this would be a good recipe to do together because we could just double or triple it really easily. Yeah. Just more pork belly, more veggies. Big pots. So the ginger, um, I'm I'm peeling with a spoon. You can peel it with the side of a spoon pretty easily. You can also peel it with a peeler. Um, I just happen to have a spoon. <laughs> and is that enough ginger for what you need? Yeah. OK, I think I had more in the fridge if we needed it. Yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful that um, in the fall we can get back to some in person. We'll have to see what things look like, but. If anybody wants to post where they're watching from, I know a lot of our audience is like, no, please don't stop the live streams because I don't live in Burlington, but we'd love to know where you're watching from. So ginger. Um, I always point this out. Ginger has strings in it um, in case you when you cut into it, you notice it's got strings in it. So if you're going to mince it into little pieces or chop it into little pieces like we're going to do here, you want to cut across those strings first. Otherwise, you end up with little stringy bits of ginger. So you want to cut across those strings first, and then, then you can chop it. And with the pork belly, did you just do sort of like a brown on it? Like, how did you know when you were ready to take it off the heat? Um, it's just browned. You can see it's I don't know if you can see yeah, it. Yeah. And it rendered a little it rendered some fat in there. There's some brown bits on the bottom that'll come up when when we pour the water in. Great. So you're not um, looking to fully cook it. Not looking to fully cook it because we're still going to cook the vegetables. Um, there is a little bit of fat from the um, from the pork belly, so I don't have to add any more oil. Right. Did you do this with tofu? Do you think? Or would it fall apart? Um, I think you could do it with firm tofu, um, but I'd add it later. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you wouldn't cook the tofu first and then yeah. leave the leave the tofu in the dish while you're cooking everything else. But I think you could do it with tofu. So the garlic. And the bitter melon, I'm going to cut the bitter melon. To get the bitter melon, you're going to cut it lengthwise first. Oh, I should have cut the ends off, forgot. <laughs> cut the ends off and then cut it lengthwise. And then this is what it looks like on the inside. You see the seeds, so you want to scrape those out. It's a little bit, it's spongy. But you want to just scrape those seeds out. So Angie has a suggestion, says maybe ground flaxseed to give a similar texture to the okra and possibly celery to substitute for the bitter melon. What are your thoughts on those? I think celery would be too mild. Too mild, um, okay. But would it give a similar texture? Like does bitter melon get soft like zucchini or does it stay crunchy? It kind of gets soft like, like the squash does. Okay. But it's smaller. You'll see when we cut mm -hmm. it, it's they're smaller pieces. Um, but I think celery would be too mild. Um, it would be the right shape, but yeah. <laughs> it would it would be too mild in flavor. Um, it might be a fun thing to try, Angie. If you make this recipe, try substituting and, and let us know how it turns out too. That's always fun to experiment in the kitchen. So here we've got, I've just cleaned out the inside. So, and then I'm going to cut it. 
I tend to cut it in diagonals just to make it look interesting. Oh, cool. And they don't have to be super thin. Um, So just little diagonals like this. Yeah. And you see celery would look the same, but mm -hmm. I think the flavor would be much different. And we talked about how without the shrimp paste, this isn't correct or it's not this dish, but is this combination of these specific vegetables also super important or is it really like whatever vegetables you have, you could throw in here and it would still be. This is the traditional combination mm -hmm. of vegetables. So. Um, tradition yeah <laughs> um but um these vegetables are pretty easy to substitute yeah and again the primary flavor in it is the bitter melon for one and the um shrimp paste okay so you could try it with other vegetables pretty easily mm -hmm. delna suggests radish substituting for the bitter melon maybe like daikon oh with daikon Again, I think daikon has, compared to bitter melon, daikon has a very, um, a very light flavor. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to substitute for it's bitter. It's hard melon to flavor. substitute for bitter melon. But yeah, Delna, try that out. Let us know what you think. It could definitely be a great, you know, other option. But if you have access to an Asian grocery store, a lot of them will carry this bitter melon, and you can try it out. Like it's very bitter. I've had bitter melon before, and it really is just like. It feels like something you shouldn't be eating, but it's delicious at the same time. So again, the eggplant, I just cut it in half and then cut it lengthwise and then cut it into little tri uh, little diagonals. Great. People come up with some great ideas for substitutions. Thank you for inputting. Also, if anybody wants to run a, an Asian grocery store, Thai Fat is apparently looking for new ownership. They had a sign up today when I went. So, wow, really? Yeah. If anybody wants to go run a, a small Burlington Asian market, hit us up. <laughs> <laughs> hit Burlington hit, up. Hit Thai Fat up. They're looking for somebody. It's a really fun market. If you're in the area and you've never been before, it's packed with so many interesting, different, unique things that I could spend like an hour in there just looking at stuff. It's beautiful. So I, tie, I try to... Um, cut and separate the vegetables in, in terms of um, how quickly they'll cook. Mm -hmm. So I put the um, I put the eggplant and the bitter melon in at the same time because okay. they, they tend to cook and the squash goes in first because that tends to cook, um, take the longest time to cook. So the long beans, you only need about four or five of them. Um, and again, you can tell why they're called green <laughs> beans. And do they literally just taste like green beans? They very much long? taste okay. just like green beans, but they're um, long. They're long. Um, you could braid them, and serve them as birds. When I was growing up, um, we lived with my grandparents um, in Florida. And my grandparents had moved here from the Philippines and my grandfather, um, who was a musician, um, mo they moved to California. And my grandfather went to visit a friend in Florida. And when he came back from that visit, my grandmother went to open um, his suitcase and the, his clothes weren't there. It was all filled <laughs> with vegetables. <laughs> And my grandmother said that that's when she knew they were moving to Florida because um, in California, they couldn't grow. My grandfather couldn't grow the vegetables he was familiar with mm -hmm. in the Philippines because the, the, the climate was too dry where they were living in the Palm Springs area. But in, the, in Florida, you can definitely grow those tropical vegetables, um, those Asian vegetables. And since my grandfather was a musician, he worked at night. Um, so during the day, he would garden and he had a garden that covered the whole yard. Um, 
and he grew long beans and bitter melon and umpalaya and chayote and just all manner of um, exotic vegetables or what we consider exotic vegetables um, to the point where I was in junior high before I realized that you, you could buy vegetables at the grocery store <laughs> because my grandmother never um, never bought vegetables. She always grew them. They always grew them at home. So um, I'm sorry, the the long beans you just cut into like three inch strips just so that they're basically look like green beans. Mm -hmm. Alice um, says, thank you for the class. I have to leave early, but I look forward to trying the recipe. OK, great. Thank you. Send us a picture. <laughs> so the okra, I'm cutting off the top stems, which tend to be a little hard, and then I'm going to cut them, each one of them in half. If they're small enough, you can leave them whole. And are those a quick cooking veggie uh, at the end sort of thing or a middle? They're kind of a middle, okay. middle cooking vegetable because, um, again, they break down and they thicken the, the sauce. Um, I've got some tomatoes here. Yeah, so for everybody who has to be leaving early, thanks for watching. Um, it is being recorded. Like I mentioned, it'll take us a while to get it up, but it'll be at that link that I posted in the chat. You can just go to City Market's class calendar page, and there's a little box on the side that says, click here to watch all of our virtual classes. I'll put it in the um, chat one more time. But thank you for tuning in while you were able to. There's the link for you. Tomatoes, again, you just um, just give those a rough chop. Take the core out and give them a rough chop. I know you've talked before about how Filipino cuisine is kind of a a mixture of a bunch of different influences. Are are there any vegetables or cooking techniques or things that were added kind of quote unquote later? Um, that yeah, this um, um, this dish traditionally um, was cooked in a clay pot mm -hmm. um, on a fire, um, and obviously we're not using a clay pot <laughs> um, or fire. But the traditional um, cooking methods were things like clay pots and open fires and um, wrapping things in uh, palm leaves or banana leaves um, in order to um, insulate them from the fire. Mm -hmm. um, when, you, when the Europeans came along, um, they started doing more braising, um, and a lot of Filipino dishes, um, I was doing the research for the for more dishes. A lot of Filipino dishes are um, unfortunately difficult to do in a class because they're long braises. Yeah, you get everything together and then you just kind of put it on the stove and you let it let it go. Tune back into class in three um, hours. <laughs> tune back in three hours later. Um, so um, that was a very um, popular, that's a very popular way of cooking mm -hmm. in the Philippines are these long braises. So I'm cutting the kabucha squash, which of course <laughs> is not easy. <laughs> Just rip it apart with your bare hands. Yeah. Um, you can eat the skin of the kabucha, so um, it's Um, it's it's nice because peeling it's kind of a pain. Yeah. Um, a, no, a good substitution for this would be um, acorn squash, mm -hmm. um, which is 
again, the skin is edible and it's a little bit easier to cut. <laughs> or delicata as well. Delicata you can use as well, yeah. Um, someone asked, do you have your own business? I would love to see the link. Anything you want to add? I do not um, currently. Um, I primarily teach cooking classes, um, mostly right now through City Market. Mm -hmm. um, uh, ever since COVID, it's been kind of hard to get groups of people together to teach classes. So um, things are kind of on hold for yeah. that right now. Okay. So I'm just going to chunk the, um, just going to cut the, the squash into chunks like this. Put this back on the heat. So we'll just keep having Maria back and you can keep learning your Filipino foods through us. Hopefully one day, if you're in person with us, we'll be able to be in person again. You are going to do a Filipino barbecue class with me probably in August in person, hopefully. Yeah, in the in the in yep. at the Intervale. Go down and grill. That one's always fun. You get to introduce people to banana ketchup. Banana ketchup, it's another one of those, it's another Filipino condiment, but it's another one of those fermented um, sauces. Everybody thinks tomato ketchup is, which is ketchup. Um, made from bananas. So it's it it very much has the texture of tomato ketchup, but it's um, made from bananas. And usually dyed red, right? So that people yeah. know that it's ketchup. <laughs> it's usually dyed red so that people think, oh, it's just like ketchup. So, okay. So this is, that's all the prep that you need to do. We did the onions, the garlic, the ginger, the okra, the green beans, or the, the long beans, the eggplant, the bitter melon, um, tomatoes, and the squash. Um, and then what you need to do is just put the vegetables in in the right order based on how long they're going to need to cook. Um, do the tomatoes, um, it's, your recipe has the tomatoes going in kind of near the beginning. Are they meant to break down? And the be tomatoes are meant to break down, yeah. so they do go in kind of early. So I put the onions in first. And you want to cook the onions. Again, I'm putting it in the in the pot that already has the pork in it. And the pork has rendered a lot of fat, so mm -hmm. you don't have to use a lot of oil. Um, but because it's pork belly, or if you're using pork shoulder or pork butt, um, the longer it cooks, the, the more tender it gets. So you might as well just leave it in mm -hmm. while you add all the rest of the ingredients. So you want to cook the onions until they're a little translucent. I know too, at some point I want to do that dessert that you sent me a while ago in a live stream because I think that would be fun to do. Oh, Halo Halo. Halo Halo, yeah. Yeah, there's a dessert um, in Filipino cooking that it doesn't actually require any cooking. Yeah. Um, but it's called Halo Halo um, and it's shaved ice and then you put a lot of um, Stuff. added <laughs> additions into it. Um, Things like red bean or mango or um, gelatin, just kind of keep adding mm -hmm. um, different things on top of it. Um, then that's a very popular, uh, very popular dessert in the Philippines. So I'm going to add the ginger and the garlic.
and get those to where they're aromatic. Mm, it smells so good. It does smell really good already. I wish we had like smell o vision technology. We can't all be here. You could at least smell it. You'd think by now we would have smell o vision that out. technology. So now I'm going to add the tomatoes. And the tomatoes go in pretty early just because they can cook down a lot. And they add um, a significant amount of liquid to the dish. We are going to add a little water later, but the tomatoes add a lot on their own. I need to find a lid. I forgot. I need a lid. Yep. So we're just going to put a lid on this really quick just so that the tomato skins can get soft. Um, and then once they're soft, we're going to add the shrimp paste. Now this recipe for this size calls for a quarter cup. It's about four tablespoons. Um, and it goes in early because it, then it cooks with all the vegetables. Mm -hmm. Again, another reason I wish we had smell of vision. Everybody yes. can smell the shrimp. You can't smell the shrimp face. It is pink. Um, it's this one died. <laughs> it's this is. Yeah, this has a little bit of dye in it. You can find ones that don't have dye in it, but then they're brown. Um, and that freaks this me one um, and the the brands that they had at the store. This one seemed to have the least amount of dye in it. There was one that was bright red. <laughs> <laughs> And some of them are colored with annatto, um, which is a, a natural red color. Um, if you can find those, those are great. OK, so now we're going to add the fish sauce. Shrimp paste. I'm sorry, the shrimp paste. <laughs> I do another class where we use fish sauce as a yep. main ingredient, so I get them confused. So again, we're putting about four tablespoons in. And it is very pungent. Yeah, it does smell like shrimp all of a sudden. <laughs> it smells like shrimp all of a sudden. But like cooked shrimp, not fresh, raw. It almost smells like um, like when you get the big bag of like pre-boiled peel and eat shrimp. It's got that kind of cooked, cooked shellfish smell. So I don't know if you can see this, but um, this is the pork, the onions, the tomatoes, and the garlic and ginger with the fish sauce. So it's already got a little bit of a thick liquid going. Mm -hmm. Um, which is what you want. I'm trying to scrape all the tasty pork bits off the bottom of the, yeah. of the bottom of the, the fond. The pot here. Excuse me. Yep. Okay. Now we're going to put in the squash because they take the longest amount of time to cook. Um, we're going to put a little bit of water in. The recipe calls for about a cup of water. Um, I'm going to put about a half a cup just because there's a lot of water in here from the tomatoes. If you use, we're using these, um, are these hothouse tomatoes? I think they're 
I think they so. Might be They're local. local. They might be local. Long way. But um, I use Roma tomatoes. I've used Roma tomatoes before. So if you use Roma tomatoes, those are kind of the oblong tomatoes. Um, there's less liquid in those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are from Longwind Farms, so they're definitely local, but I think they are grown in, you know, houses up here in Chile, Vermont. So you put the squash in, cover it for about five minutes to give them a head start. Um, and this is the easy part of the recipe. Um, the hardest part is getting all the ingredients and doing the prep. Um, and then you just put it on the stove and yeah. um, let it cook. So you can see why we had Maria do the prep on camera. A lot of people are like, you should just have everything ready to go. Like it would have been a 10 minute class if we did 10 <laughs> minutes, put everything, put everything in. in a pot and wait. So um, I think it's fun too to watch how different instructors cut vegetables too, yeah. like knife skills and all that. So. And. Um, yeah, so if you can get. Um, I know one of the things you can you can substitute for um, bitter melon is chayote. Mm -hmm. um, again, it'll it won't be the same exact taste, mm -hmm. but it is sort of a, a very similar um, uh, similar taste. It's not anywhere near as bitter. Yeah, it's got obviously. the texture, right? The texture is going to be a little bit similar. So if you can find chayote. Um, there's another word for chayote, and I always forget what it is. I'll Google it real quick. Um, but <clears throat> if you can find that, you can try substituting that for bitter melon. But if you have an Asian grocery store anywhere near you, you can always find bitter melon. Also known as the mirliton and choco. Oh, merliton. Merliton, yeah. yeah. Kind of looks like a squat version of the bitter melon, just less bitter. Instead of long and skinny, it's short. So now I'm going to add I'm going to add the okra next. And again, the okra is going to cook down and thicken the sauce a, a lot. Um, so add the okra and stir that up. And so as you probably can imagine, um, this class is going to be closer to the hour than the hour and a half. We left plenty of time for questions, but this recipe will probably be done closer to 6.30 than 7. So we'll let people go early if there aren't any burning questions at the end. But now is perfect time to get those questions in. Um, you know, Marie and I can just keep talking, but it's more fun when other people have questions that we can incorporate. And now I'm going to add in the, the long beans, the bitter melon and the eggplant. And you want to stir that up to make sure you coat all the vegetables in the sauce. Looks like I'm going to add a little bit more water. Mm -hmm. Hold that up so you can take a look. That's at, great. Um, it's a great veggie mixture. So very healthy. It's kind of using pork as like a flavor rather than the main body of the stew. Yeah, it's a veggie stew with a little bit of pork. It's not pork stew. I'm going to add some black pepper. It's a very interesting grinder. Yeah. I think it's designed to reduce wrist stress because like, you know, like the twist grinders, if you try to twist them a whole bunch, your wrist starts to hurt. So I added a little bit more water and some black pepper. And then we're going to let that simmer. <clears throat> Normally you would let it simmer for about 10 minutes. Basically you want to let it simmer until the squash is soft. Mm -hmm. um, if you want your vegetables softer, then you can let it simmer for a little bit so longer. Mm -hmm. The eggplant eventually will disintegrate yeah. <laughs> if you simmer it for too long. Um, and traditionally this is served with rice. Um, so just plain white rice, steamed white rice. Um, yeah. And while we're waiting for that, before I plate it, um, does anyone have any questions? 
There aren't any questions added to the chat right now. I can kind of keep talking to keep things interesting while people are maybe typing in some questions. Um, is a Filipino meal structured like a typical American meal? Is there like an appetizer or a first and then a main and then dessert or um, different? A typical family Filipino meal is not. It's just served family style with all the dishes on the table. Um, and there are. Um, there's not really a lot of like appetizer, salad, main dish type of delineation. Mm -hmm. um, they kind of all are main dishes with rice on the side. Yeah. <laughs> um, and um, a very traditional uh, Filipino way of cooking is something called a boodle fight. Um, and that's spelled B-O-O-D-L-E, boodle fight. Um, it's where they take a table and they cover it with banana leaves and then mounds of rice and then they just pour food on top of the rice. So they'll put chicken adobo on top of the rice. They'll put um, braised shrimp on top of the rice. They might put panak bit in a, in a bed of rice. Um, and everything is eaten with your fingers. Oh. So everything is eaten where you take the sticky rice and you make kind of a little ball of sticky rice and you use that to pick up the other um, the other dishes. I really strongly recommend that you do a Google search on Boodle Fight um, and take a look at some of the pictures because the, the pictures of how the dishes are, or how the tables laid out are just amazing. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's a communal way of um, communal way of, of eating. Traditionally, they say it's because of in, in military campaigns, that's how they would feed the soldiers or the warriors, um, is to just put all the food on the table and let everyone eat with their fingers. Um, a lot of food is eaten with the fingers in, in the Philippines um, with the, the, in that method where you take the sticky rice and you make kind of a ball out of it and then you pick up the other foods with the sticky rice. I googled it because I was curious where the term came from and apparently some people think it's because the term boodle was American military slang for contraband like cake, candy and ice cream. And so it was like a big party atmosphere where all the foods were served, but also there'd be like these little sweets on the side. I'm not sure what they called it bef before the American military, yeah. but um, it is a traditional way of eating in the Philippines. Kamayan? 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 is the traditional Filipino method of eating with the hands, describing the Filipino communal feast where food is served and eaten without utensils. I love boodle fight. That's fun. I get a fork. Yeah, Kamayan style Filipino culinary experience. So you want to check the, um, the squash, because the squash is what takes the longest to cook. This needs about another five minutes, but I think it's it's almost done. Just put the link to Boodle Fight, the Google search in the chat if anybody was curious. If there's an interest in fil more Filipino cooking, I'd love to know what other recipes people might be interested in seeing yeah. or other types of dishes. Yeah, so like we were saying, Maria's done lumpia, she's done the chicken adobo, she's done the pan sit, although that video is not up, which is like a stir fry noodle dish with a lot of veggies. Um, we do the Filipino barbecue street food style when we do the in-person class, but if there's other dishes that you're interested in that you think could work in an hour and a half class, like you were saying, that's the other problem is we can't do a six hour braise, unfortunately. Um, but let us know other recipes that you might be interested in seeing. We'll have to figure out how to do it. There are some some desserts that I'd love to show involving sticky rice, but they do take a long time. Yeah, we can always um, talk about like me doing stuff ahead of time. It's just whether like there's anything for class people to do. <laughs> See if I can rustle up a shaved ice machine and do Halo Halo. Because that sounds like something I want to eat. It's interesting. It doesn't smell that shrimpy anymore. It doesn't smell very shrimpy. Like it's still there, but it's definitely you're getting a lot of the other fragrances mixed in. So 
this is, I don't know if you can see that. Mm -hmm. um, this is what it looks like. You can see there's a lot of, there's liquid here, but as as it cools because of the okra, um, and as, if you cook it longer, then um, the, the liquid will thicken up. I'm testing them. The squash. OK, so the squash seems to be pretty much done. Again, if you want your vegetables cooked a little bit more, you can just cook it longer. Mm -hmm. So like we said, this class is probably going to wrap up soon. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat so we can get to them. And just remember that we're on a delay. So if you're typing frantically, well, we will see it, I promise. <laughs> so this is Panak Bit. It's a pork and vegetable dish. Um, and it's served with rice. Yeah. Would you ever serve this? Um, I know in previous classes we've made like that vinegar dipping sauce. Are any other condiments added on top of this or is it um, as is? I used to eat this with a little bit of fish sauce on the rice, mm -hmm. but um, there aren't traditionally more condiments. Um, my grandmother would put a little spoonful of straight up bugung almang, <laughs> so it's just straight up shrimp paste, and she'd kind of mix it in with her rice as she's eating along. Um, that's a little much, much. for me, <laughs> but um, but. Again, it's the that shrimp paste is the um, primary ingredient mm -hmm. in this dish. Because I noticed this doesn't really have any um, hot. This doesn't have like the hot peppers or anything. There's no heat, heat in this yeah. dish. No, it's mostly the the fish or uh, the I, shrimp paste. I think you mentioned, didn't your grandfather like to put the hot vinegar on like everything? Yeah, the there's a spicy vinegar condiment in the Philippines, which is um, it's basically hot. Those those little bird Thai chili mm -hmm. um, peppers steeped in vinegar with garlic and um, black pepper. And the longer you steep it, the hotter it gets. Um, <clears throat> and that's often poured over everything. Mm -hmm. But if that's if you like heat, yeah. if you don't like heat, then <laughs> it's not necessary. All right, but that's that's it for the Panak bit. Again, it's a really easy dish. Um, you can use, we use pork belly, but you can use pork shoulder or pork butt. Um, and the hardest part about it is prepping all the vegetables beforehand and then just adding them into the, um, adding them into the pot. Um, does anyone have any more questions? No, I'll leave it open for another minute or two because there's always that one question that sneaks in right at the end, right as we're about to say bye. But yeah, you can see that, you know, in under an hour in almost exactly an hour, Maria has both prepped and cooked, so it's a really easy. Um, so someone asked, can we use the Chinese fish paste? Um, you can use fish paste. It's going to have a different flavor than the shrimp paste. Mm -hmm. um, in the Philippines, which is thousands of islands, um, different regions use a different variation on the bagung. There's different types of bagung. Um, bagung alamang is the traditional one. But there's another one, um, another type of bagung, which the name escapes me right now, but it is made from fish. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to change the flavor if you use fish paste, but um, it'll still be the in in uh, it'll still be a regional dish. Yeah, great. Someone just says, "Great class, thanks so much for continuing these virtual classes." Um, you're welcome, and I enjoy doing them. Thank and you. I enjoy having different instructors come in and do them. Just hopefully one day we'll get back to a few more in person as well. Um, don't see any other questions coming in, so we will wrap up. Thank you all so much for tuning thank in. Thank you today. very much. Yeah, thank you to Maria for coming and sharing. Um, I'm really excited to eat dinner, and uh, hopefully we will see, quote unquote, see you at another virtual or in-person class with us soon. Good night, everybody.